Hello everybody, Mo here, and today I'm bringing you guys a video over the patch notes. I know I've been kind of AFK the last few days, didn't do a, a meta Monday, but that's because I knew we were getting this really big patch today. Um, so I didn't really see a point in making a meta Monday when we were going to get this huge patch today and things were going to, you know, change a lot. Um, and also I did put out a video uh, yesterday on Tuesday because I've just been really busy grinding trying to get to 650 LP so I can camp and qualify for worlds guaranteed. So uh, yeah, my videos are a little bit inconsistent for this next coming week because of just how much competitive LOR I've been playing. And it's really hard to balance competitive LOR and you know a life outside of everything and you know make time for videos and stuff like that. It's very hard. So. And that's why the video has been kind of, uh, you know, missing here and there. And then also why this video is coming kind of late. I mean, usually people post uh, the patch notes videos before the patch actually happens and when they first hear about it. But, um, you know, I'm kind of late to the party, but who cares? You guys are going to get it. So now we're going to go over all the patch, uh, the changes. There is a lot here. So I'm trying to go kind of fast. This video isn't too long. And then uh, try and get my idea of like what I think is going to change, what I think is going to be really good, what's going to be really good day one, at least to get you some LP there. And yeah, and I'm kind of cheating because I've already played a little bit, so I can already tell you what's been going well for me. But um, yeah, so let's start things off. So number one, Leona. So Leona goes from four mana to five mana, but she gains Challenger. And then leveled up says she gets Barrier. I don't know if she got Barrier before, but it says whenever you activate a Daybreak, um, stud the strongest enemy and give me Barrier this round. So I don't think she got Barrier previously, but now she does, which is cool. So now she's a five mana, three five with Challenger um and that's done something and when she levels she which is very easy to do uh when she comes in and she's leveled and all that type of stuff then she gets barrier um while she's being able to challenge things which is pretty good so overall i think this is really good i think it's probably one of the better uh, champion changes we have that's good so let's go over, uh, over the rest of the sun break or the sun uh what's it called sun oh daybreak package so sun guardian really good this card got insanely good. This used to be the really big, you know, give me plus four, plus four this round and it has overwhelm. But now uh, it's a three mana, two, three that says daybreaker. When you activate another daybreak card, grant me plus one, plus one permanently. So 99% of the time, it's going to be a three mana, uh, three, four, which is good already. Three mana, three, four is already on par. And then after that, it basically just gets plus one, plus one every single round. So it just grows and grows and grows. And then once you get a Ravoon in play on like turn six, then, um, or in turn five once you get ravoon in play this guy's gonna get really scary really fast he gets to grow multiple times a turn and it just becomes way too much to deal with uh, a couple other daybreak packages it's gonna be morning light change so it's three mana give allies plus one plus one this round instead of plus two plus two and it activates um an allies daybreak effect so it only activates one allies daybreak effect and it only gives uh allies plus one plus one for the round but it's cheaper and it doesn't have to be daybreak. You can play it whenever you want. So you can play it after, you know, you just after you fill your board up with like you play a daybreak unit. Cause this was a really awkward curve of saying like, well, I want to buff my units, but you know, I want to play the daybreak units, but I want to make sure that I get the daybreak from morning light, you know, so I'm not gonna be able to play my units first. Well, now you can play your daybreak units first and then morning light afterwards. That's not going to mess up your curve. Solari Selicorn, um, instead of going from five mana, Four six heal all allies three. It's four mana three four daybreak. You give all other allies plus zero plus two this round. Eh, card's pretty bad. It's four mana three four. That's pretty bad. Uh, give other allies plus zero plus two just for the round. Pretty bad. So this card's still pretty unplayable. Sunburst went from six mana to five mana. Pretty decent. Um, you can't find this card off of like Reggie anymore. It's a, probably just a nerf to this card. Uh, actually, it's a buff to like this card directly, but it's a nerf to like every other card that generates six cost cards which is kind of bad um because everything that like could generate six cost cards like reggie um anomaly uh conservatory stuff like, like that the mage seeker conservatory uh stuff like that can't find sunburst anymore which is kind of sad um but the card itself obviously good goes down to cost so nocturne so that's it for the daybreak package now we're going to go into the the nocturne package nocturne package so instead of just saying attacking with um nightfall units nocturne is now also going to be a fearsome gener or a fearsome engine so it says when you attack with um nightfall uh, with five plus nightfall or fearsome allies now so very good you can play him in things like spiders you can play him in more uh, aggressive decks now instead of just like shoving him into the nightfall package and saying this is the one deck you belong in good sir 
which I think is pretty cool. Um, the level up, uh, level two is going to be really good with like harrowing. You should be able to level Nocturne insanely fast. You should almost always have level Nocturne on turn four if you're playing like a spider type deck. If you're some aggro um, deck, you go like, you know, turn one, Precious Pet, turn two, I don't know, like Precious Pet Stygian, and that's three out of five Nocturne curve right there. It's like you're pushing eight fearsome damage on turn two, and you've just like essentially leveled up your Nocturne which is on turn two, which is pretty nuts. So you shouldn't really have an issue with leveling him super early and then harrowing in the late game is going to be a really good finisher. Uh, Vioma turned into a, it's a three mana, six, six fearsome, but it says give all other fearsome allies plus one plus oh. So pretty cool. Um, also, I don't know if it had a, um, a fearsome unit before. Or I don't know if it had the fearsome keyword before. I assumed it did. If it didn't, holy shit, that's insane. But yeah, I assume this was a 3-mana 6-6 six, six Fearsome before. If not, it is now. It's a Fearsome, and it gives all other Fearsome allies plus 1, plus 0. Oh, pretty good. Uh, and then Twisted Tree Line, which is how you get the Vioma, now attacks with Nightfall allies as well as a Fearsome. So they're kind of combining the two the archetypes together. So this used to just say Fearsome. Now it says uh, Fearsome and Nightfall. So kind of goes with the Nocturne change, kind of making things kind of work more together and not just very clearly, hey, you belong in this one deck, in this one archetype, and if you don't fit, oh well, so sad. Next is Tom Kinch. Uh, basically, all that happens is you get an acquired taste on summon now um, instead of round start or only round start. So it's Tom Kinch on summon and round start. You get the acquired taste. Pretty good. I think the meta is still really bad for him right now because Swain's going to be really big. So Scorch Earth Fox going to be huge. Uh, Ionia is humongous. So there's like homecomings and every other deck you play against. So they're just going to bounce your landmark before you win over and over and over again. It's going to be very frustrating to play against. But that's good it'll be good for the future when ionia is not a thing and we ever get into a damaski meta i think tom kinch is going to be insane all right master e so now the spell reduction is going to be permanent um yeah it's basically he used to say reduce the card in your hand by one for the round now it's just going to reduce the cost of that card by one permanently which is pretty cool fiora goes from a three mana three two to a four mana four four i think this is huge um this is huge. She pretty, pretty much got was unplayable at a 3-2. Uh, making her a 4-4 is really scary. Putting her on turn 4 is really good nerf also to kind of balance it out the fact that they made her bigger. Because now you can't just curve Fiora into Shin or Fiora into like Taric or something. You have to curve uh, Fiora into some type of 5-drop or have you know less mana like fiora comes online later she's harder to get rid of like i don't think fiora is going to be solo carrying many of your games but it is still going to be a threat that your opponent has to deal with and i think that's probably where they want her to be which is um really good and they're going to make it harder for them to do the like all in fiora strategies so if you're doing the like mono fiora decks like blue steel or the shirima version or whichever version where you're just playing mono fiora it's going to be a lot worse because you don't even get your fiora in play until turn four and you're not going to have spell mana to keep her alive and stuff until you know probably turn five all right uh swain so basically swain's base stats got bigger and not only did his base stats get bigger but he gained overwhelm when he leveled which is huge uh i know this is the biggest thing a lot of people were talking about i'll tell you so far it's been kind of lackluster i think i've lost a one swain deck um and it was because my curve was really bad but this is something that everybody's excited about this is what you're gonna see in every youtube video everyone's gonna be talking about the swain leveled up leveled up swain this is what everyone's trying right now um hopefully it, it, it's cool i mean it'd be cool if swain was really strong and if he is you know really strong then just let him be strong you know fearsome overwhelm still has the nexus strike deal three to all enemies uh and the enemy nexus so if he ends up getting that overwhelm damage through um you know even one point of overwhelm then he just like board wipes you and then deals an extra three to the face which is cool i've seen a lot of people pairing this with the ionia hook master because you know the hook master is uh demacia or no sorry the hook master is ionia noxus so you can put that in all of your swain decks whether you're playing you know noxus bilgewater noxus pnz whatever it is you can play the hook master get you know like quick attack or something or even scout on your swain and you can just like really pop off with like a big quick attack swain or quick attack leviathan or something uh which we'll talk about leviathan in a minute allow you basically allow you just got reverted uh she paid for bard sins or in level up got buffed instead of seeing an ally has a struck for 10 ally has a struck a strike for eight Eh, kind of whatever uh viego got, turns back to uh six mana so or go gets pushed back to six mana 
So he gets plus one, plus one in stats, but comes down a turn later. This is basically just um, because they don't want like mono. The, you can notice they're t going away from these like mono champion decks, where it's like the idea is just basically go all in on their champion. And then if you draw it, you're insanely powerful. And if you miss, you're just sad. So um, especially because his stats are really big on turn five. Like he's basically like this says uh six five now most of the time he's going to come in as a six five anyways because you're going to have like a husk on board or something and so really it's going to be like a six six and a five mana six six that just generates a bunch of units every turn and then eventually solo wins your games is really really hard to deal with on turn five so they're just giving us like an extra turn to get ready for him and try and be able to deal with him hate spike uh goes back to two mana Hate Spike on one was pretty broken, basically just because of the husk. I think if they removed the husk, I would be perfectly fine with them creating a Hate Spike card that's called, like, definitely not Hate Spike, where it was just one mana, like, basically Hate Spike at one mana, but you just don't get this husk. And I think that card would be good. Uh, Mark, the Storm goes back to two damage. Sign in goes from a 3-5 to a 3-3. It's kind of irrelevant. Sermon goes from dealing four to a unit to the nexus to dealing three to a unit one to a nexus i literally won a game earlier today because of this nerf so thank you riot games um opponent tried to sermon my Tarek, and i literally almost conceded um because my Tarek was at four hp and i literally almost conceded and then i re remembered that it's patch day and uh get fucked rest in piss sermon you won't be missed rip bozo decimate going to five mana to six mana i don't know why they did this let's read the noxus burn package uh of strong one drops and solid face damage has been overperformed for a while now in large part due to the redundancy got option reducing the nexus to zero we don't want to axe decimate entirely just cut back okay first of all this is not true it's only the noxus burn package has only been overperforming when you printed this card this was the only reason that the noxus burn package has been overperforming literally before riptide sermon pirates was just like a very mediocre deck the only reason pirates and aggro came into the meta at all was because 4lw realized that this card is so broken you just put it into aggro and then now your aggro game plan gets to just go mid-range for no reason and take over the board and you're just playing like a tri beam deck with aggro units so i really think decimates paying for riptide sermon sins here and it's very frustrating um but it's what it is six mana is pretty cool though you get to play with jace you get to find it off of like reggie um yeah all that stuff whatever Air rating goes from 9 mana to 10. Um, basically, uh, Red Gwyn was being insane with this, and then I think they're trying to like proactively nerf it for the um, Nocturne, in case Nocturne ends up being really good. But um, yeah, Harrowing was really, really good in Red Gwyn. Uh, Rite of Calling goes to 1 mana. 0 mana, Rite of Calling is pretty broken. Who knew? Targon Speed goes to 6 mana. This one's kind of fucking weird. Um... I don't really know why this deck got nerfed. <laughs> I don't really know. I, I guess you could do it for like player experience, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> I think it's really funny that uh, they nerfed this card. I don't, I really don't see why they nerfed it, but I think it's hilarious that they did. Uh, Timelines goes from one mana to two mana. Basically, Weapon Masters broke this card, um, and this card will forever get stronger and stronger. Every anytime they create a unit with a summon of with a play effect or summon effect where it's understated because the play effect or summon effect is super strong uh it buffs timelines so yeah this card honestly in my opinion this card should just say like if you can keep it at one mana but just have it work for like the next three followers you play or something like that like because then also if you draw multiple timelines it doesn't feel nearly as bad but if they draw timelines on one the game's not just like over uh all right so variety card buffs uh so these are the buffs so all those were nerfs actually not not all those were nerfs these were all nerfs right here and then we talked about the um yes these were all the nerfs these were all the buffs for the champions so this is just like a generic cards or like variety cards i guess is what they call it so a eula is that how you say this instead of giving an ally spell shield and overwhelm for the round you grant an ally spell shield or overwhelm and then if you don't grant it to a different ally, you give it to yourself. So this at worst is like a three mana, three, three overall, three mana, three, three spell shield, or it's a way to grant uh, your Pantheon spell shield again. So um, you, or overwhelm, like you can grant Lee Sin's overwhelm, grant your um, dragons overwhelm, stuff like that. So this could be potentially make uh, Pantheon come back. Pantheon kind of went away once they took away your high rolling from scout elusive. They made so you can't generate scout anymore. Pretty good um, change. So this could be to help that out. Also, this card, I don't think I've ever seen this card played. Uh, Paper Tree. Uh, you grant the attach unit plus one plus oh. 
instead of the actual unit that's attached sure i don't think that matters shrieking spinner old spiders was two five uh grant attacking spout or attack grant spiders plus one plus so so now it's a two four four mana two four attack grant spider allies everywhere plus two plus oh so it basically went from being a three five to a four four and then it buffs all your other spiders pretty uh pretty whatever that's pretty all right eh i don't know if i don't see any play ritual renewal goes from seven mana heal seven draw one to four mana heal four draw one uh this card won't see any play ever this card is horrible but it's cute i guess also, if anything, this card just got worse because now you can't randomly get it off of, like, Reggie and stuff like that if you're playing, like, PNC Ionia. And sometimes you needed that with, like, your Karma decks to, like, generate it and be like, oops, I accidentally gained, like, 20 HP. Haha. -ha. So, Ripper's Base. So, this card is fucking insane and hilarious. And to see people's takes on this card is crazy. So, Ripper's Bay used to say, before you attacked, uh, obliterate the top card of your deck if it's not alert card. Now it says whenever your allies attack, before triggering lurk, you grant the top ally of your deck lurk, and then it becomes a lurker. So for those of you that don't know how lurk works exactly, do I have LOR open? I do not, I'll open it up here. For those of you that don't know how lurk works exactly, basically all of the lurk units are considered lurkers. And those are the things that get buffed plus one plus oh whenever you attack. So a lot of people's take on this is you take good cards now, like, oh ruin like ruin runner because you're in you know bilgewater shirima and you play ruin runner and ruin runner becomes a lurker on like turn one or something or you know turn two probably you play like landmark turn one predict turn two find ruin runner on top attack so now your ruin runner is a lurker and you hit lurk and then by the time you play this ruin runner on turn five it's gonna be like a five mana 10 three overwhelm spell shield unit which is like super nuts um I think this change is insane. I don't think this change is necessarily broken or anything, but it'll definitely... Be, I think there is going to be a broken combo with it or something at some point in the game. Um, so it'll be very cool to see what people end up doing with this, what the um, go-to strategy is, because now also you're not tied to Shurima. Um, you're not, you don't have to play Bilgewater Shurima. You can just play, like, Bilgewater anything and play a good Lurk package. And you can just, like, permanently... But, like, you can play, like, Bilgewater Noxus Overwhelm or something. Bilgewater, Frelly Word, Overwhelm. Like, literally, Bilgewater, anything, probably Overwhelm, and you're just, like, permanently giving these units plus one, plus oh, and it's fucking hilarious. I saw someone trying to try this out. I think it was Cocky, Cocky Baki, where he was playing this with the uh, land, the other landmark that rallies when you attack with a five-plus cost unit, and then so the goal is, like, you lurk enough times to where you play the two-mana free attack unit, so you play that, it's at five power, it triggers your free attack, and you just, like, get a free rally, and it's really funny so i don't know i think there's some crazy stuff with this probably all right leviathan went from eight mana five eight overwhelm deal one damage three times to seven mana five seven so basically minus one uh cost minus one one in stats and then it only deals two damage doesn't deal three anymore um basically it's just to get your swain online faster game's way too fast to be putting your swain into play on turn nine so very cool uh magical journey let's see plans a portal top card three times Plant a, portal, plant a chime on the top oh so you're just planting a chime on the top card of your deck instead of three random chimes yeah seems whatever realms caretaker i don't even know i didn't even know this card existed six mana four four so it was a six mana four four each round the first time one of your champs are activated give all allies plus one plus one and back yeah i don't think that card's a card grumpy rock bear goes from a five four to a five five cool funsmith goes from a one three to a two three cool the issue is that this thing costs fucking four mana dude it's a four mana two three no one's gonna play that nobody's playing that ever all right ma'am the shaman goes from a six mana four four overwhelm what the fuck was this card six mana four four to a six mana five five overwhelm unit and so if you damage the nexus and round transform me and this is the thing it's a six mana seven seven round star gravity plus two plus six so it's really like a, a nine nine and then eleven eleven and it just like continues to grow and your opponent has to kill it on site uh eh, i mean six mana five five overall isn't like the actual worst thing but that's pretty bad <laughs> that is a pretty bad stat line but we'll see maybe it gets put to some type of like transform deck like sensuani nar or something if that deck ever comes back so uh this goes from being a 4-3 to a 3-3 elusive 
Yep, that's how you fix things. Just throw the elusive keyword on it. Seems kind of broke. And we got new skins. We got a Garen skin and a Zoe skin. Very cool. So overall, I think this patch is really cool. I think there's a lot of big changes. I think the probably the changes that'll matter the most as far as new decks coming in are going to be the Swain. Um, the Swain change is probably going to be the biggest one that brings a new deck in. Um, I could see Fiora coming back into the meta. Yeah, I think like Fiora and Swain are probably going to be the most likely to come back into the meta. As far as nerfs go, nerfs that matter. Um... I don't really think a lot of relevant things got nerfed. I think Viego getting nerfed is going to matter. Hate Spike's going to matter. That's huge. Like, the, so these right here are really big. The issue is this patch was put in so far in advance that it didn't hit any of the Nami decks. And people are kind of off of the Kin and Ezreal train and are just spamming like Nami Lee Sin now. And they were not going to get an emergency patch or anything. So yeah, that's, that's the only complaint that a lot of people have is that because of how far in advance the patch was put in, we didn't know how broken this Nami deck was. And it was literally in the last like week that people were like, hey, this Nami deck's kind of unbeatable. And it was too late because I already put the patch notes in. But outside of the Nami deck, I think every other like top tier deck got hit pretty hard. Obviously like Pirates isn't a deck anymore. Viego getting hit is like really good. The Hate Spike getting hit is really good. Mark of the Storm's really good. Getting hit's really good. Um, you know, stuff like that, it was really nice. Like timelines being not like, super oppressive like turn one for free is really good so that way people like at the earliest is going to be getting a unit on like turn three with timelines so that's pretty nice um or i mean i guess they could timelines like a, a one drop but that doesn't really matter so yeah overall i'm very happy with this patch i obviously wish they could have hit nami leeson but how are the devs going to know what we find out you know how are the devs going to know what's broken that far in advance and assume that we're gonna find it you know like what well, their options are to either like pre-nerf things that people are like why would you do this like we weren't even playing that deck or wait until we figure it out and then have people complain about like oh my god they didn't nerf this deck that we found out about two days ago what are they doing so overall super happy with the patch really excited to play uh, as far as what to play day one um let's see here i think i've been playing poppy Tarek today uh and it's been going really well um i think i'm up like yeah i'm up like 150 lp yeah i was playing jack's timelines last night but yeah i've lost twice so i'm 11 and 2 with the deck um seems pretty good it good it's good enough to beat like the random shitter decks but also see here like i'm beating a bunch of like like swain tf here swain misfortune here like another i, I lose to this swain this is the one that's like where i got like uh, bones didn't high roll me but i just drew really poorly i drew really bad but then like i beat it again up here swain annie so a lot of people trying out swain today and you know i'm having success into it which is good and obviously like you don't have the worst matchup into nami so i think poppy tear should be really good i'll leave that deck code down in the description below but that's gonna be it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it huge patch huge patch notes let me know what decks you guys are excited to try if you're gonna be trying some sort of daybreak package a tom kinch package let me know in the comments down below but that's gonna be it for this video hope you guys enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one